900 feet long, 175 feet from keel to funnel, bearing over 2,000 souls, including several of the world's wealthiest. Experts had crowned it the unsinkable, and it was making good time on its maiden voyage. One Jewish man, though, battled a feeling of unease. Isaac Frauenthal was born in Pennsylvania in October 1868 on the Jewish festival of Hashanah Rabbah, meaning Great Salvation. He opened a law practice in New York, and in March 1912, he traveled to Nice, France to attend his brother Henry's wedding to Clara Rogers. The newlyweds journeyed on to the English port city of Southampton to ride the luxurious Titanic back to New York. And why not? A new life, a new ship, a liner predicted to live happily ever after. Isaac chose a scenic route through France, boarding the Titanic at Cherbourgon the day after Passover. He paid today's equivalent of $4,000 for a first-class ticket. But he was jittery. Days earlier, he had an awful dream. He saw himself aboard a colossal steamship that crashed headlong into something large and began to sink beneath the waves. He awoke shaken, but dismissed the dream because he believed neither in dreams nor the supernatural. The night before boarding, his dream reoccurred. An oceanic collision, helplessly sinking. Escape, escape. But the sun rose, and so did he a lot less certain than before. Was there anything to this? Should he board the Titanic? Should he share his dream? No, they would mock him. The ship was unsinkable. Isaac quietly boarded the Titan of the Sea, but he later found a moment to share his fearful vision. As expected, he was roundly ridiculed. Until four nights later, when, at 11.40 on April 14th, the ship's lookout spotted a colossal iceberg dead ahead. The Titanic reversed its mighty engines and lurched to the left, but its starboard was lacerated. Ice tore into steel, and water dragged the ship's throat downwards. Isaac heard the captain express terror and ran to rouse Henry and Clara. Too many passengers refused to abandon ship at midnight, unable to believe that a lifeboat was safer than an Olympic liner but Isaac had seen this vessel sink twice already. As he rolled into a lifeboat, he said, Well, Henry, I wasn't so foolish, was I? Henry wasn't sure. Surely such an engineering wonder could remain afloat until it could be repaired or towed. But the Titanic's stern rose into the air with hundreds clinging on. Snapping clean in two, the vessel plunged into the eternal silence of a bottomless ocean. One and a half thousand souls were lost. A nightmare, a reality, in the heart of the night. One sunrise and six hours later, Isaac was hoisted aboard the Carpathia, which sailed on to New York. He no longer doubted that something had forewarned him about the disaster.